Equilibrium is always the first question on the AP exam on the free response portion. Now, we are going to spend about a month talking about equilibrium. Um, actually, it'll be probably about a month and a half when we talk about all the different kinds. We're going to start off with just basic equilibrium today, so it's not a very long lecture, unfortunately. I know that upsets a lot of you. Uh, then we're going to segue into acid-base equilibrium a little bit after fall break, and then we'll talk about salt equilibrium as we get closer to spring break. I think that's right, yeah. But today, I've got a pretty cool demo here that I'll show you guys. You all are going to love this one. It's not as cool as the gas demo, but um, if you want to show this to your parents and your friends, yeah, you can. Um, when we talk about equilibrium, a couple things here. One of the big things about chemistry is all the chemical reactions we've been talking about up to this point are the minority. Equilibrium is really the majority of the reactions that take place in the universe. And we all sit back and think, well, why haven't we been taught that? Because you have to learn the basics before we can talk about equilibrium. But a lot of chemical reactions that are going on in your body are equilibrium type reactions. And that's good because that doesn't mean we have to keep putting in new products. When you talk about biology, if you take AP biology, you're going to talk about pH balance. That's a buffer system. We'll talk about buffers a little bit later on. Not today, not before, eh, be right around Thanksgiving when we talk about buffers. But it's an equilibrium type system. In other words, the types of food that you eat, the types of drinks that you drink, cause your pH to change. So we have to have a buffering system or an equilibrium because we don't want to have to take other types of medications to regulate our pH. So today's just very basic equilibrium information. When we talk about equilibrium reactions, we start off with reactants and we produce products, but what's different from all the other chemical reactions is once we start to make some products, they immediately start making reactants. So it's a reversible reaction. So reactants make products, and as soon as we've got some products, it's going to start forming some reactants. And there's what's called equilibrium, is when the rate of the reactants producing the products is equal to the rate of the products producing the reactants. Some of the reactions, when we look at an equilibrium reaction, it appears that the reaction has stopped. And I've got a diagram or a graphic on here. I'll probably impose it in the video. But it's located right here on your um, discussion sheet or lecture sheet here. Where we see that, and I'll try to replicate this, and it won't be very good. But we start off with some reactants, and they actually react to a certain point, and they level off. Once we get to a point where it appears that the reaction has stopped because the concentrations are no longer changing versus time, some might stand back and go, oh, that reaction stopped. It's no longer proceeding. Well, the reality is, once it hits that plateau, we are at equilibrium. Okay. And here's a pretty neat demo. Here I've got, over here on your left, these are reactants. Here, these are products. How many products do I have right now? Should be zero. Got some residue from when I washed it out. So there's nothing. And that's the way that a lot of reactions start off with. And here is a beaker to represent how many or how much how many reactants form products. And this is a beaker to represent how reactants, or I'm sorry, how products form reactants. Because when we look at an equilibrium reaction, my marker, it is reactants are forming products. And then what happens is those products move in the reverse direction to form reactants. So we're starting off with something. In most reactions, we'd start off with nothing but reactants. They form some products, and immediately what happens is some of the products try to form reactants. And they will, depending on how much we have. And when we get this back and forth reaction going, and the rates of the reaction forming the product is equal to the products forming the reactants is equal, we're at equilibrium. Now, one thing I do want to point out is that doesn't mean that the concentrations or the number of moles or the grams will be the same. 
It just means that the rate of the reactants forming products is equal to the rate of the products forming the reactants. So when I look at the beaker again, okay, I'm going to start off with reactants forming products. But actually, I want to start with the products forming reactants. You ready? How much did we form? Nothing. Nothing, because we don't have any products, so we can't make any reactants out of that. However, fill that up, and you'll notice I've got towels here for a reason. So I've got this beaker is full. I dumped that in there. Okay. The first time we didn't have any. Now we've got some. It goes back. Fun. And we go forward. It's almost full. When we get to equilibrium, the amounts will be the same. Because these are these are representing the rates, even though it looks like amounts in your eye. I'm trying to get full. I think it is. Okay. Still full over here. Alright, they're both full now. Sweet. Are the rates the same now? No, because this is 200 mils, this is 100 mil, a little over that. When the amounts are the same, that represents the rate are the same. Okay, so I'm still full there. Still full there. Still full there. Still full there. My fingernails are going to be green, or my cuticles are going to be green when this is all done. Still full. Still full. Uh oh. I can't go full. Okay, so that's the best that I can do. Still full. I'm trying to get as full as I can. Okay, now it's about a little under 200 mil, according to this. Now, again, it's not a very accurate reading. Still full. That's about 150. It's getting clo close to equilibrium. A little less. I should make a lab out of this. You guys should have to do this. Record how many times. Wouldn't that be awesome? That looks about the same. Let's see. Well, no, you gotta keep going. A little bit more. Yep. It's close. It's very close. Let's go a couple more. Alright. Now, let's get my finger out of there. That's probably why. And this is, this is the fun of equilibrium. This is what happens in your body in most chemical reactions. Oop. Make a rabbit. I'm feeling it. Close enough. <laughs> so now we are at equilibrium. So now that the system is equal, the rates of the products forming the reactants is equal to the rate of the reactants forming the products, the system is now at equilibrium. However, it may appear as you're watching the concentrations or the number of moles of whatever you have here, it might appear that the reaction has stopped, but it is still going. Okay? So now, here's another thing. These are reactants. These are products. We can manipulate a system where we can take all the reactants and move them over as products or start off that way, make a reaction reversible. So here we go. There's nothing in there, sorry. Let's do that again. I'm not going to be a very good bartender. All right. None. And then we can see. Are you about to do this all over again? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the 
But here's the key. Here's the thing. Even though we didn't start off with anything, I've got something. Okay. We've made some products into reactants, and now I've got a little bit. Okay. This was full. This was full when I moved it over. But this is how much of the reactants are now forming the products. So we got to build it up to the equilibrium. A little bit better. Look at that. See, the system's getting efficient. Now, you get to watch this at home if you want to tonight. And some of you will. I know there'll be hits like crazy on it tonight. Almost there. It didn't take that long going from this direction to that direction. Okay. So the thing I want you to realize here, let me get it back to equilibrium. Okay. Are the levels the same? No. That is one thing that we cannot misinterpret. Because a lot of people say, oh yeah, when it's at equilibrium, they're equal. No. The only thing that's equal is the rate of the reactants forming the products. And the products forming the reactants. That e that's equilibrium. And my finger, my cuticles are green. All right. Now, on your equation sheet, I know there's an equilibrium section. Oh, yeah. Right underneath where it says atomic structures, there's an equilibrium section there. And they have the Ka, Kb, Kw. We'll talk about all those Ks later on. But really what I want you to look at, and I honestly don't know why they placed it here where it says oxidation reduction on the other side. Take a look at that side. And you'll see a Q. Q is a point in the reaction that may or may not be at equilibrium. So we don't know. So Q is a point in the reaction. In other words, when I first started off, Okay, this is at equilibrium. This would be a K value, an equilibrium constant. Q tells us if we're at equilibrium or not quite at equilibrium. But when we do Q or K, it's always the products over the reactants. Okay? And today we'll talk about concentrations. Tomorrow we'll talk about gases. So we'll get to do equilibrium with concentrations and gases. We'll never ever do it with pure solids. We'll never ever do it with pure liquids. Okay, concentration with aqueous solutions. And that's what our blood has a lot of, different ions in there. Also, if we have the equation, I think it's on the equation sheet that says where, yeah, or make sure it's the same. This, little a times big A plus little b times big B. And now we get to use double arrows because that represents a reversible reaction is equal to C and D, okay? The A, the B, the C, and the D that are lowercase represent your coefficient for the balanced equation. So we still get the balanced equations. So when we write our equilibrium expression, and you always get to write that, that'll always be, eh, not always, about 95% of the time, that will be the first question of the first question. In other words, part A in the equilibrium section. We would write our products, okay? and then we have the coefficient. We'll make an exponent and put our products up there. And then we put our reactants on the bottom. Okay? So that's our expression. If we're at equilibrium, and again, this is telling us if we're at some point in the reaction, we may or may not know that we're at equilibrium. If we're not sure, we use Q. If we are at equilibrium, then Q equals K. And what is K? It's an equilibrium constant. Now, I love chemistry because constant starts with which letter? C. But they, they got at least the K sound right. Okay. All constants are, have a K for whatever goofy reason. All right, now, here's a good little thing to try to figure out. If Q is greater than K, Q is greater than K, 
we're not at equilibrium, but do we have more reactants than products? Or do we have more products than reactants? In other words, which direction do we need to shift to get to equilibrium? Okay. Now let's think about this. If my Q value is too high, and let, let me give you like a, a fake Q value. Let's say that it's 10 to molarity. In other words, when I plug in all my concentration, whoop, I'm sorry, Q is 10. When I plug in all my concentrations, Wait, the Q's or K's K is 10. Q is where we're at in the reaction, okay? So all of this is to equal 10 molarity, and it's a ratio, okay? So in which direction do I need to shift? Are my products too high or are my reactants too high? Now think about this. If Q, this is Q, is too high, is it these numbers or those numbers? It's the products, very good. So what that means is I need to take my products and make reactants to get to the equilibrium. It's going to be a quicker rate for them to form the reactants. So I need to shift toward the reactants. Okay? And you're going to hear that term, shift left, shift right. What that means is I need to shift left. I need to shift the reaction. Like what I did here on my like last demo, I had no reactants. I only had products. So their Q was very, very high. It wasn't even close to the K value. So when I made, I, actually, when I tried to make some reactants in the products, it didn't happen, but I had, this baby was full. This guy was empty, okay? So you shift in the direction that will cause this to go down, and if the concentrations of C and D go down, what happened to the concentrations of A and B? They go up, and it's not, they're not gonna stay the same if one goes up or one goes down. So it's always an inverse proportionality there. So if we take products to make reactants, then the reactant concentrations are going to go up. All right. So if Q is less than K, and that's how we started our reaction, okay, started where we had nothing but reactants and no products, and I'm not going to do it again. But we started off with nothing but reactants, and if I were to find out how many of the products I had, none. So that means we need to take a lot of reactants and form products. So I need to shift right to get the equilibrium. In other words, I want Q to equal K. When Q equals K, that means the ratios for these are what we need them to be. Okay? They're not going to be the same. Okay? These values won't be the same. The concentrations won't be the same. But the ratios. Okay. Um, so if I go this direction, what happens to the concentration of the products? They should increase while the concentrations of the reactants decrease. Okay, so that's what this represents. Guys, I hate to tell you, but I think we did it all. Let's do the examples on the back. There's two. Uh, let's see. They're not really numbered, but the first example says calculate the reaction quotient Q. Now again, the reaction quotient, we don't know if it's at equilibrium or not. Okay. It says calculate the reaction quotient for the following reactions at a specific temperature. Now I'll talk about temperature a little bit later on because that's a big player in this game, but not today. All right, so we've got our concentrations. So the first example says that we have concentrations in nitrogen, hydrogen, and ammonia, and the equation that was given, nitrogen plus three hydrogens make two ammonias. Okay. So we want to write our reaction quotient based on what's given here. And this is a reversible reaction. I can actually start with ammonia and form nitrogen and hydrogen. Okay, That's what this means. It's a reversible reaction. But based on the equation that I was given, and you'll be given the equations as well, how would I write the quotient? Who goes on top? Products. Products, which is ammonia. So I'll put NH3. And since it has a coefficient of 2, we square that. Okay. And then we're going to put our reactants on the bottom. N2. Since it has a coefficient of 1, we don't need to put a value there. 
you need to, that's fine. Okay. And then for the hydrogen, since we have a coefficient of three, we cube it. Okay. This is always the first question, 95% of the time, that's asked. We always want to write our expression first. Trust me, you're going to get so bored that it's going to be second nature. Okay? It's a, you're just automatically, when you get an equilibrium problem, that's the first thing you're going to do. And if you're not doing that, then you lose points. Easy. All right, so let's plug in our values now. So our concentration for the nitrogen is given. Actually, we'll put it in the order. Of the, so we have 6.3 times 10 to the negative nice of me to do that. So 0.63 and square it. What's that? Okay. And then my nitrogen is 0.46. And again, these are molarities at mole per liter. And then the hydrogen is 0.22. And that's cubed. Okay. Let's type that in and get a value. And do show your unit. And it's not a conventional unit that we're used to, and that's okay. So 81, anybody get that? 81.0? Yeah, 318. Um, what's my unit here? It's not something we've ever done before. One over molarity? Molarity, just one over molarity? Molarity squared. Good. Because again, we have three of them here, and whenever we multiply exponents, we add them. So we've got four on the bottom, two on the top. Now, this is a weird unit. Trust me, it's weird. You're never going to see an 81, 1 over molarity squared. However, it is an equilibrium unit. And when we start looking at concentrations of gases and uh, pressures of gas, that'll make a lot more sense. So just bear with me for a little while here. Okay. All right. Do the next example on your own. Don't peek up here. Oops. And do write the expression. Concentration is the same. What are we doing here, mathematically speaking? What's that? The inverse. Very good. So if my products are now reactants and my reactants are now products and the concentrations are the same, we just take the inverse of our answer. So hopefully you still have that number in your calculator, and hopefully you have an inverse button that you know how to use. So we get 0 0.0, 0 0.0123. And what? How do you know which ones are reacting? Right here, from the balanced equation. But if you can go both ways, then you They'll give it to you. So whatever is given. In other words, in the first example, we were given these as reactants, and this is a product. So yeah, that's that's a really good point. I Always. See the you see the the equation or the problem there? Yeah, but you said the line, the arrow thing, means you could go both ways. That's correct. That means that we are going both ways, but we have to start with what's given. So in this reaction, we started with the ammonia, and we we're making this. Yeah, so again, like from here, we can start the reaction with only reactants and no products. Or I can have the reaction where I start with just products and make reactants. Okay, That's the neat thing about equilibrium. It will get us there. It will get us to equilibrium. Now, what's the unit on this? Molarity squared. Very good. So it's just, today is just getting the math and the basic concept down. So, Taylor, always look for the equation. It'll either be given or it'll be given in word form. So you have to read the question a little bit carefully there. Okay. Uh, let's see. 
equilibrium position there. When it talks about equilibrium position, okay, and this is something like that. Okay. Based on that graph that's on the front of your sheet, the Q tells us if we're beyond the equilibrium point or not. Sometimes you might have a Q value that puts you right here. So it'll tell you that you're not quite at equilibrium. And later on, we're going to talk about once the system's at equilibrium, I might, at this point right here, take out whatever this is so that we have none of that, and then the system will shift accordingly to make that. We'll talk about that later on. But when we talk about position, it's checking to see, are we at equilibrium or not? So in the last part there, where it says equilibrium position, you were given some initial concentrations. They are different, I hope. Yeah. Um, actually, we're not going to do the calculation. But at the bottom here, it shows how there were no products, and then the system shifted to make sure that we had something. In other words, you will never, ever have a zero amount of any one of these three things, or any reactants, or any products, if the system is at equilibrium. Okay? There's never a zero. There's always something present at equilibrium. Now, at the beginning, we could have zeros. Okay, we can have we can have zeros at the Bro. beginning. Here, we can start the reaction with only reactants and no products, or I can have the reaction where I start with just products and make reactants. Okay, that's the neat thing about equilibrium. But at equilibrium, we got stuff. Okay. And the key here is, the most important thing is, these don't have to be the same at equilibrium. Okay? It's the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Okay? Questions? It's a good little intro. It's not, not too detailed. We'll, we'll talk about gases tomorrow and they'll sound pretty much the same. But we'll have some pressures, some atmospheres in there. Good? Bad? So the homework for tonight has you calculate a few Q values, okay, or it might tell you it's at equilibrium, which then, if, this, if the question tells you it's at equilibrium, you're calculating a K. If it doesn't say it's at equilibrium, you're calculating a Q. Know the difference between Q and K. Q is at any point. Might be at equilibrium, we just don't know until we compare it to K. Now, if it tells you, what's that? K is K is the equilibrium constant. Q is the equilibrium quotient, but we don't know if we're at equilibrium or not. And then once we have our Q value, if it's equal to K, you're at equilibrium. There's Nothing's going to shift. In other words, the rate of the forward reaction won't be quicker than the rate of the reverse reaction. If, again, we have... Do I still have those? Oh, I don't. If I have more reactants than I do products. In other words, Q is too low. Okay, Q is less than K. The system is going to shift where the rate of the reactants forming the products is much, much higher than the rate of the products forming the reactants. And then if Q is much, much higher than K, then it's the reverse. The rate of the products forming the reactants is going to be much, much higher than the rate of the product reactants forming the products. You can play this video back a few times to hear what I'm saying. All right, giddy up.